Okay gang, Private Jack here. Welcome to part six of my series on how to decompile a static model, get it into Blender, fiddle around with it a little bit, and get it back into Source Filmmaker. So in the previous sessions what we did is we went to Steam and we downloaded Source Filmmaker. We then found a Steam game that we wanted to add the assets uh, to Source Filmmaker for and use GCFscape to port those assets into Source Filmmaker. Remember, Source Filmmaker does not reach out into other game files. It has to have its own copy of the actual assets in order to use them. From there, we found a model that we wanted to edit a little bit and use the crowbar uh, decompile tool to decompile the model, put it into a project folder, from there, we went and we grabbed the VTF files for that particular model because Blender can't use VTF files and converted them into PNG files. And we'll see how that works out in a few minutes. Next thing we did, we went to Steam and we actually downloaded Blender. From there, we went to the Blender Source Tools webpage, downloaded Blender Source Tools and installed that. From there, what I did is I went to my library in the software's uh, section and right clicked on Blender and created a desktop shortcut to Blender so that I can now just launch it from my desktop. So let's get Blender started. Okay, this is the Steam version of Blender. It's no different from the one that you would download from uh, Blender.org, other than the fact that it's an install and it actually installs to your Steam uh, folders. To clear the splash screen, just click anywhere on the screen. If you installed Blender Source Tools properly, if you come into the File menu and down to Import, somewhere in this list of files that Blender is able to import, you're going to find Source Engine, SMD, VTA, DMX, or QC. This means that Blender Source Tools will ex import any one of those four formats. I'm going to turn on screencast keys here so that you can see the key presses that I make. And this isn't an actual add-on to uh, uh, Blender anymore. It used to be there. What I had to do is I actually had to go back into previous versions of Blender and grab the PY file and put it into 2.75 so that it would actually do this. It's a custom install. Okay, so working with, uh, let's see. I've already done this video once. It was 31 minutes long. Uh, when I came to render the video, I found that I'd left my mic turned off. Therefore, I'm redoing it and actually have decided that I'm going to break this down into a couple of parts. In this session, we're just going to cover the actual in, uh, import of uh, valve models. <clears throat> so let's get the actual scene set up. First thing I want to do is I want to get rid of this default cube. I'm going to right click on the cube, press X and delete it. Next thing I want to do is I want to move the camera and the light to a new layer. So I'm going to right click on the camera, hold down the shift key and right click on the lamp, press M and move it down here to the last layer. That now makes my scene clean and I can see what I'm doing. Okay, as I said before, my purpose here is not to teach you how to use Blender, but to show you the process that I use to actually do this kind of stuff. So if you don't know how to use Blender, there's plenty of tutorials out there. Uh, BlenderGuru.com, BlenderToots.com, and if you go into the actual Steam community, uh, things are actually picking up in the community. There's lots of guides, lots of videos, all the rest of that good stuff. So have a look there. 
Okay, now that the scene is cleaned up, what we're going to do is we're going to put the cursor in the center of the scene. Let's say it's way up here. Wherever that cursor is, is where a model's origin point is going to spawn. So I want it down here, dead center of the stage. What I'm going to do is I'm going to push down Shift S and move the cursor to center. That puts the cursor in the center. There's another little uh, thing that needs to be addressed here, and that's how the cur uh, 3D cursor acts. If you go into File, User Preferences, and go to Interface, there's a checkbox here called Cursor Depth and Auto Depth. They're usually turned on by default, and what that does is it causes that 3D cursor, if you want to move the cursor around and put it inside a model, it will not penetrate closed mesh. So basically what you have to do in order to penetrate mesh is turn that function off. If you turn that function off, don't forget to save your user set. Okay, now that that's done, let's get a model in first model that we're going to bring in is that actual photo badge that we want to work with. And the way that I do that is I simply click on File, go to my Import uh, selection, come down here to Source Engine, click on that. Notice down here there's a whole bunch of options. Okay, You can actually preserve the SMD polygons and normals and what that's going to do is it's going to cause a rough model to be imported. You can import any animations. You can reset your uh, camera to uh, or make a new camera at the origin point. Uh, you can append models to the existing armature. You can validate the bones of something else that you bring in to the existing target or you can make a new armature for it. For this particular case, because it's the first item in, we're just going to append to target. You can change the up axis as well. Most models made for TF are built on the Y axis. Y axis is up. The reason for that is a lot of them come out of Maya and Maya's default axis up is Y. So let's turn that on to Y. Rotation method, E ruler, bone shape, sphere. I can change that to default and I won't get those little round bones that come in when you actually bring in uh, a valve model. We'll leave it at sphere for now so that you can see what I mean. Next thing I want to do is I want to point to that folder that I have my project in. So it's on my desktop, photo project, and basically this is the file that I want to bring in. So I want to bring in that reference SMD. So I select it and press import. Remember I said most Valve models are built on the y-axis? Well there's a perfect example of it. Okay, now this is the model that we want to use. There's another way of actually importing this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the sniper. Remember we uh, decompiled the sniper? Okay, so file import SMD. I'm going to change this to the sniper now. And remember we have all these different body groups. Okay, if I bring in the sniper reference and just bring that in, I'm going to get the sniper and he's missing arms, he's missing uh, what, his hat, he's missing all kinds of weird and wonderful stuff. The reason for that is because they are separate body groups. Now what I could do is I could actually bring those in one at a time. And remember I showed you that append to target? Well, let's bring in his gloved hand. I select that model, leave that set at append to target. Because I brought it in with Z axis up,
He's lying on the ground. So I'm going to leave that where it is, and I'm going to import that. What that did is it automatically took the bones that were in that body group and matched it up with the bones that were already there. Okay, so basically there is the sniper. He now has his arm, and I could go through and do that for the entire model. Build his hat, build it, everything else. <clears throat> If I come over into my Blender Source Tools and come down here to Exportables, what I'm going to find is that I have individual objects now. <coughs> Excuse me. So there's the Sniper Ref, then the Sniper Gloved Arm Group. I could bring in his hand group without the glove on it, and I could bring in his hat. And these would start building up because they're individual objects. Right now I'm going to select everything and I'm going to delete it again. I'm going to go into ortho view by pressing numpad 5. I'm going to go into front view by pressing numpad 1. And I'm going to import that sniper again. Import SMDs. This time what I'm going to do is I'm going to import the ref group oh, I forgot to change that let's do that again okay cursor to center file import SMDs I'm going to leave that pen to target change that to the y-axis and import that reference mesh again Okay, so now he's standing on the floor the way he should be, and here he is. Right now, this model does not have any shape keys. In other words, there's no facial flexes in here at all. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to append the VTA to the model. The way I do that is I do a file, import, SMD. This time I'm going to select the VTA I'm going to change my up axis to Y because that's what I did when I imported the reference model. And I'm going to leave it append to target. Import. This one's going to take a little bit longer because what it's doing now is it's going through and it's comparing mesh, existing mesh, to the actual model. And here, what you see is you've got arrows, you've got quivers, you've got hats, ha arms, and everything else. But what it's saying here is these little dots are actual vertices that cannot find a match within the model. And if I select the model itself, what I now find is that I have a whole bunch of shape keys. And these are the actual meshes, or the uh, uh, shape keys that form the mouth movements. Okay, these in, uh, invisible dots here, jumping jeepers creepers. These visible dots here, what I can do is I can delete them because they're not associated to anything. And that just leaves me with the leftover shape keys for that have actually matched. Now for each of these shape keys, what I have to do is I actually have to walk through each and every one of them and make sure that the vertices that are in the model move the way that they're supposed to. So that's an another long process. Okay, now that we've see how VTAs work, let's do another import. This time what I'm going to do is I'm going to go File, Import, SMD. I'm going to change the Y axis or the up axis to Y and this time I'm going to load the QC.
takes a little bit longer because what it's doing is it's combining everything that's here and actually loading it into the model. Okay, so what we see here now, if we go into the exportables, we have the ragdoll animation and it's on a armature. We have the sniper's arrow group right there. The forearm body group. And is that the one with glove or without? That's the one without glove. We've got the glove group, which is in the same location. The hat. And we have the physics model. Source Filmmaker does not require a physics model. So we can actually delete that right off the bat and see what we're left over with. So here's the entire sniper now completely built in scene based on the QC. Here again are the uh, leftover vertices that didn't match from the VTA file. We can delete those uh, right here. And if we select the model and go into the actual object data, we should have all the shape keys because it loaded the VTA file at the same time. Where's the mouth open? Jaw, draw, jaw open. There we go. So there's the jaw open and basically lips open. Where is it? Slide jaw left, slide jaw right. We have, what, 140 some odd shape, 274 shape keys associated with this particular model right now. Not all of them are used when it comes time for compile. If we come down here and select that, only 54 of these 274 shape keys are actually going to be placed into the model. The rest are all corrective shapes and that's uh, what a corrective shape is, is something that is used to build another shape with. Just to make it simple. So this model will only have 54 flexes when it actually compiles. Anyway, so there's the glove group. If I actually hide that now, there's the arm group. Hide that. There's the ref model. Hide that. The quiver. Hide that. The hat. Hide that. Uh, that was the tooth hat, and this is the regular hat. Hide that. And the arrows. I'm left over with one skeleton and basically there is your model. That's the buildup of an actual valve model. Armature and a whole bunch of objects that move with the model. So that is importing models into Source Filmmaker, you, or correction, porting models into Blender using Blender source tools. Next session, we're actually going to go in and we're going to start editing up that photo picture so that we can get it back into Source Filmmaker. But I had to show you this portion of it in order for you to understand where I was headed. With that, I'm going to say Private Jack out.